There's a, a Jake LaMotta, the fighter, is a neighbor of ours in Bisbee, Arizona. He lives two blocks down. If you don't know Jake LaMotta, uh, he was a fighter, a legendary fighter. The movie Raging Bull, yes. No, that? Yeah. Robert De Niro. Yeah. For you 22 year olds, let me explain. Robert De Niro used to be an actor uh, in the moving pictures. And one of his greatest roles was that playing Jake LaMotta in Raging Bull. It was a real guy that's our neighbor, and we never met him till last year. A mutual friend brought him to the house to watch football, and we're wicked excited, like fucking Jake LaMotta's coming here. And they brought him over. He's like 91. There's no Jake LaMotta left of the Jake LaMotta. So we're all like happy and they bring, bring him in and we're like, oh. Like for a boxer, my age, they're fucked up. And he's twice that. So they bring him in, like he's fucking up. They have him by one elbow, 91 years old. Uh, uh, and they plop it on the couch like an eggplant. We're like, hey, Jake Lamont is here. Uh, and he's got a trophy wife who's 30 years his junior, which means she's still in her 60s. So the trophy is a bit tarnished at this point. It's a, it's no Stanley Cup anymore. It's, a, it's more of a bowling trophy. And she's a very sweet woman. She has all the characteristics of trophy wife. She has bleach blonde hair and the 60-year-old tit job is forced up so the good parts are showing through the top. And you go, okay, and she's very sweet and she's trying to distract from... Jake LaMotta doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know he's watching football. He's confused on the couch. Hey! The only time he showed any cognitive recognition of his surroundings, I saw him scrambling with his cigarettes and fumbling and looking to the door like, who will walk me out so I can smoke? And I said, it's okay, Jake, you can smoke in the house. And he went, uh, uh, uh. That's how fucking deep cigarettes get you, nothing else. He said, uh, uh. Then straight back to confusion. Uh, uh. So his wife is uh, very sweet, and she's talking to me and Bingo. I can't believe we've lived here so long and we've never met, and it's so nice. And at some point she says, you know, Jake and I are doing a play on Saturday night at the Central School in Old Bisbee. We'd love it if you come. I wrote it myself, she says. <laughs> oh, really? All by your little lonely. That fucking half cadaver on my couch didn't chime in with some of his great ideas on how the script should be written for the arc of the story. And normally you would have to stun gun me, cattle prod me to get me into a play. I'm not interested until I spend an hour and a half with Jake LaMotta at my house. That's gonna be live on stage. I'm not missing this for the world. And we went and it, was, it lived up to every awful expectation that we had. It was so tragic. She wrote it herself. It's called Lady and the Champ. And she wrote it. So thank God it's mostly her. And she has an acoustic guitar. So she'll tell some stories and anecdotes and then sing some uh, show tune kind of things. In the corner stands a boxer and a fighter by his... And you're like, oh God. And then they, they plop the champ out on the other side of the stage in a chair. And they sit him down. He still has no idea where he is. He still thinks he's watching football at my house. Uh, uh. And his only job is to pepper the script with some uh, one-liners and some shadow boxing. So occasionally he stands up. Uh, I fought Sugar Ray so many times, I got diabetes. <laughs> Which is not a bad line for a fucking 91-year-old boxer. Except the champ forgets he already did the line. So moments later, he stands back up. Uh, 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 
but in the middle of a song, stop, but sugar ray, and they have to come out. They can't stage whisper to him because he's deaf as a stump, so they physically have to come out and push him back down in his chair and yell at him. Not yet, champ. Wait till the end of the number and then you do the, okay? All right. And we're in the back of the room fucking dying. Like it's quiet, we're having to bite our hands like children in church, trying not to giggle. It was like seeing if, uh, if, if Mr. Shivo brought Terry Shivo on the road as a song and dance act. Hello, my honey. Hello, my baby. Hello, my ragtime. Uh, uh, thank you. Terry and I will be selling merchandise after the show. Terry will lick your t-shirts for you to personalize them as a little souvenir of the great time we had tonight here. And as much as I'm enjoying it, for all the worst reasons, there's part of my head going, all right, how long before that's you? How many, I've been doing this shit 23 years. How long? I've taken a lot of shots to the head just like the champ. How long before that final synapse in my brain burns out that would have told me, don't do this anymore. You're, you're, you're embarrassing yourself thoroughly. But I have my trophy wife, Bingo. She doesn't want to get a real job, so she's just shoving me out on the stage. Go get him, champ. Uh, uh, uh. Jägermeister. Uh. Maybe it already happened. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe this is being filmed. To rem don't do this anymore. I live every day of my life like it's my last day on earth, kids.